Mm-hmm. But you mentioned Russia, so maybe this is a chance to uh, talk a little bit about comparing uh, Chinese approaches to soft power to Russian approaches to soft mm-hmm. power. Um, yeah, let's start with that. Um, yeah, I've been looking at this recently as part of a new project that's in kind of a nascent phase still of research, but I, I've been really curious about how uh, Chinese and Russian governments perceive this concept, this idea, uh, you know, differently in what ways are they converging um, and should we be treating them as kind of in some ways aligning? I've described it in my work as an information nexus, like are they forming kind of an information nexus? And if so, what's the scope? What are what are the frictions? And I found that there are some similarities and some um, quite significant difference setting in how the two countries view soft power. So one um, big similarity is this increasingly anti-Western, anti-hegemony kind of orientation of soft power, that the idea of, you know, having to rebalance wanting to rebalance the West, especially the United States, um, and the notion that more multipolar world is just more favorable. We should be, we should welcome multipolarity and multiple perspectives, and of course, many powers, but especially Chinese and Russian um, influence around the world. So the idea of anti-Western orientation and the grievances with the West, I think, are equally shared uh, between China and Russia, but maybe, I mean, with this in, in light of the current war, more so by Russia than China. So we see this um, this positioning there. Uh, and also both countries have adopted this concept uh, at the highest levels of their foreign policy um, kind of making. It, it comes through in various speeches, it's discussed and debated by scholars, like it's really is kind of part of their consideration of foreign affairs. But one significant difference that I think still holds is that even though both of them consider the West as in some ways um, unfavorable, they want to rebalance it. Uh, Russia has a much more destructive disposition when it comes to how it wants to promote its image um, and how it wants to engage in strategic communication, really wants to destruct the current uh, status quo, right? So we see this through the war, we see this through its propaganda machinery, Russia Today, if you observe this reporting, if you look at the speeches, they explicitly discuss information war, they they incorporate that term directly as part of their um, kind of policy rhetoric. Sometimes it even is much more prominent than soft power itself as a term. To me, that's, that's very indicative of the fact that it's about um, competition, destruction, and really it's, it's a zero sum game here. When it comes to China, there's still some mention of telling the China story, right? Even in the latest Xi Jinping speech, you know, how, how, how much should we believe it? Well, that's a separate question, but at the very least the rhetoric says, suggests that there's still an interest in positioning China as having its own story, it's having its own vision, as kind of, you know, there's some some sort of sense of wanting to advocate for China's vision. Whereas for Russia, we don't really see a Russia vision. We see an anti-Western vision, but is there a Russian story, right? The Russia kind of alternative. I'm not sure I see that, and I don't think that's what they're really advocating. Uh, 